Hey everybody, welcome back to another J&K discussion. I'm Jammer. I'm Caleb. So Bungie just announced that their House of Wolves DLC will be uh, releasing on May 19th, which is just a few weeks away. And they uh, released a an awesome CG trailer alongside it. And so what are your first overall impressions of this little clip that we've seen and just the story that they're trying to go for here? So in the clip that they showed, they showed, uh, you know, the madness going on. You just see these bodies all over the place and then the queen standing there. Attractive as ever, you know, staring yeah. down the path, looking at everyone who's dead. And what the story really emphasized was on how she had taken in the Fallen mm -hmm. and gave them a home, and then they had betrayed her. Which, in the game, you only meet this queen very briefly. Not even a level, nothing really for her, just mm -hmm. a little cutscene. And you and do a quick quest for getting her permission for going to the eye. Just eyeball, that's all you yeah, get the eyeball, yeah. off her. And in that cutscene, you do see two Fallen... Uh, captain standing there and they guard her and your guy's like I can take them but then your ghost and like, there's no Shut explanation up. why they're there or literally anything there's no that. background other than what was read through the little cards online which mm -hmm. nobody reads except for those people who are way yeah. too hardcore for this game yeah so maybe with this uh, DLC they're actually gonna maybe emphasize a little bit more on a, a real story rather than going on your mobile app to read about character bios and stuff like that because I mean since like the last trailer there really was just like the darkness below trailer wasn't that just like it just showed a bunch of hive on the moon and there was a bunch of people just attacking it and that was about the extent of it well the darkness below trailer they tried to make an excuse for hey check this out they tried to make it seem like they were going to incorporate a heavy story with it which they really could have done great on had they added in some cutscenes which they are fully capable of doing yeah. as shown in their actual gameplay but yes, essentially it was just a couple of guys going down, fighting off a bunch of hive. Just end going, of story. Yeah, you just go a little bit deeper than the normal story yeah. went. Or, yeah, you know. exactly. You get a nice little peek at this god that's forming. But other than that, it, there was no other real uh, cutscene that mm. kind of built on that story. Yeah, so maybe hopefully for this one they're going to maybe try to incorporate a story more into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, by the, by the looks of the first pack, it might literally just be the same thing. Just like, mm -hmm. just some new levels, new, new skin. yeah, and which is unfortunate, but I mean, what do you, what do you think is more realistic? For their whole 10 year plan that they've announced back when the game was first released, I'm hoping that maybe they're going to try to build off it, because the first DLC, it was really their first attempt to get something out there to mm -hmm. recapture that interest. It only in, came out like, what, three months after its release? About, about a little while after its release, three or five months afterwards, but what happened with it was we were expecting so much more from it mm -hmm. we were expecting the story we were expecting a lot more gameplay a lot more weapons a lot more customizations of some sort but they didn't do that for us now yeah. supposedly rumor is that in this one there will be new subclasses released along with it interesting and the subclasses they haven't announced but there is that empty slot with your characters whenever you do play showing where an a empty slot could be, yeah. exactly. And there's also empty slots for uh, ghost skins as for well. For ghost skins but as I well. Mean, if they do that, you know. If they do that, then that'd be great in a way. It would bring out maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more customization for people. Uh, hopefully they don't bring out the one that you get for your ghost edition. Oh, they or... won't. Yeah, that's exclusive. But yeah, that's exclusive. Anyways, so what is this pack actually going to consist of? Is it going to be raid? Is it going to be new weapons? Mm -hmm. Like, what what have they said so far? So the standard things with these new packs, from what we've seen and from what we've heard, is yes, there will be new weapons. There will be most likely new map location as well. Yeah. As for a raid, I'm not so sure if they're actually going to be fully developed in that idea mm -hmm. uh they haven't really said anything about it other than there's a lot of talk of there not being one really and my hope is that there is a raid of some sort released with it would be i feel like a phenomenal raid that could go along mm -hmm. with it but that's really just up to bungie and how they feel this yeah. dlc is going i mean they might want to just focus more so on your character classes your player just the elements that make you you yeah. more than the actual how can we just shove another way to get rare exotics out yeah exactly so i remember back at the end of the summer they had that promotion for a, it was like a week or so where one of the queen's representatives came and you got reputation for that 
oh, for the yeah, queen yeah. and like mm-hmm. so how do you think they're actually going to incorporate that because that was forever ago and like they mm-hmm. said it was going to influence this DLC pack that's yeah. going to be coming out so how do you think that's going to affect it so sadly my expectation is it's going to be just another kind of like a clan or a faction if you will and they're shop and <laughs> it'll, it'll just be a fancy shop with pink equipment that looks great yeah so any regrets like freaking uh, grinding to get rank one or whatever you got so rank two? no regrets with that I got a great armor like uh, shader so <laughs> that's always nice um other than that I do have to say there is just overall regret with their whole entire faction system and mm-hmm. maybe they can bring this faction to more light maybe it will update the other factions give them a little bit more value than just Hey, they got a nice shotgun, let's go for it. Another thing to know is that the reef will be acting as a new social area, like a new hub world for us, kind of like the tower mm-hmm. originally. So that's going to be one of the big things that is going to be looked forward to. Yeah, so it's like a new social area for exclusive to this DLC. Yes, exclusive to this DLC. From what I'm understanding, mm-hmm. there hasn't been clear, there hasn't been a clear announcement on that. Yeah. There's a chance that maybe they'll just throw it in for a patch update and allow for People everyone just hang out there but. but in my respects i would hope that it would be a dlc exclusive well if it is then it i don't know it kind of feels restrictive because i mean it makes sense then that oh you it's a little bit easier to like find players to play with for those maps mm-hmm. but i mean at the same time it's like bear i know they're, they already bared off all those missions but like having another hub world where now, a lot of people who play this game aren't even going to p- appear at the tower anymore. You might be the only person there now, you know what I mean? So if everyone's going to the reef, like, well, I don't know. That it's... is very true, but if you also think about it, it'd be a great way for them to make the money. Saying, hey, if you want this new hub world, buy the expansion pack. And it's a, it's very possible, but like I said, there's probably more of a chance of it being just a patch that's thrown in or just an add-on for everyone. It'll be nice to see a little area to hang out, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean... To be honest, though, the tower didn't really serve much purpose anyways, besides kicking around a soccer ball. Or being cryptarched by the cryptarch. Yeah, pretty much. You know, so I mean, like, it would be pretty interesting and fun to me, but it's just the way they executed the hub world in the first mm-hmm. place. What it, I don't know. It's just what it's not that interesting. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, there's no, there's no economic infrastructure. There's no really social infrastructure. It's literally, you're just running around shops, and you happen to see other people running around as well. Exactly. And you, maybe you find one or two cool things, like the soccer ball or yeah. the big purple ball or like, the vent. It's interesting. I mean, it's a nice addition. But for this game, it, I don't think it's... I don't know. It's the way been, they do it, yeah. it just isn't... Yeah. The practicality of throwing it in there isn't... If exactly. it was any other game, like, if it was, like, a uh, one of those massive multiplayer online games where, like... Or I don't know, like World of Warcraft, they make a new continent or whatever, and then there's like a little town where there's a con- like that's actually a fun new social place that people are gonna go and talk and communicate and have fun with each other, you know, and actually communicate and like be like, oh, we should do this together, so we got. But like their hub worlds, just I don't know. Their hub They're- worlds don't have very much to them in general. Yeah, it'll still be nice to explore around, and like check out the new area, I guess. Mm-hmm. But other than that, that's all it really is. Exactly. So anyways, back to the DLC. Mm-hmm. So I'll, as, as far as new areas go, I'm sure they're going to be in like the reef area. What do you think? Mm-hmm. What do you think the area like? Because in the beginning of the trailer, it almost looked like there was like a like the flag. It almost looked like there was like a war breaking out, mm-hmm. almost like civil war. Like so with the flag, that was the representation of the actual fallen. That mm-hmm. was their original clan, and when they had joined up with Queen, they had joined her clan, which is kind of that diamond pattern. Yeah. They are representing that flag to say, hey, we are now our own. But what was interesting with that scene, too, was the fact that there was snow. We yeah. haven't seen a snowy level through and through, so my hope is maybe with the rift, they're going to be unleashing this winter zone. Like a hoth area like or a red hoth bar. Or, yeah, exactly. Something just filled with snow, blizzards, and maybe obstruction of your view at times and you just have those things that lunge at you yeah i feel like if they did something like that it'd be sweet you know or even incorporate like a coldness factor a coldness like factor yeah keep your heat or i don't mm. know something that'd be awesome it'd be yeah. interesting yep so you think since the fallen are underneath the queen wouldn't this technically be in a sense like almost a civil war where they're trying to break free and become independent so what if the player could actually choose what side they're on and choose to either be the queen or the fallen now, that was one of the things that I had thought about when I first was playing the game was when I saw that, you know, there's definitely going to be something going on with the Queen and the Fallen. Uh, the interesting sense of that, uh, them trying to break free, is that the Queen had actually rescued them and didn't enslave them. They actually willingly bowed down to her, and she had even addressed that in the clip 
saying, like, you know, they even knelt down yeah. to me. And they protected her, but then for some reason or another, they betrayed her. And my hope is they do a really solid job at explaining why they betrayed her. I'm sure they literally, they're out and they're stranded and they're going to die anyways. But then someone was being sympathetic to them, so they took advantage of it, built mm. up their strength, and then once they felt powerful enough to be out on their own, they did it. And that is what has been stated many times in the character cards, is that the Fallen are ruthless, and they do yeah. go up for power. And that It was just her mistake is. having sympathy on them, really. It was, but the problem with that is she's strong enough herself. She was the one who was pretty much fought to become the queen. Yeah. And she outdid her brother for king. She outdid all the other people for the position. Yeah. Speaking and of so her brother, how do you, speaking of her brother, how do you think he's going to be incorporated in this story? Do you think he's there's going to be a little, like, Hamlet story to it where he tries to take the power from her or something like that? So, using the fallen to, I don't know. Like, I can definitely see where you're going. The brother is the dick of the game. Yeah. And I think my own opinion is maybe he tricked the fallen into betraying her, saying, mm -hmm. hey... We follow can make me. you yeah. follow me. We can become stronger, and everything will take revenge or something. Yeah, and because he just has that whole mentality of like I should be the one in power. Even in the original gameplay, yeah, you get that feeling of I don't trust this guy. Something's up with him. Mm -hmm. That would be really awesome if they incorporate something like that. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't know, it would give a little bit more life to the actual game if they, you know, because honestly. It's either gonna be something like this, something really innovative, and this is what Destiny needs. Destiny needs a DLC that's actually gonna be story based, and it's gonna be, you know, something that makes you feel a lot more involved in like. Exactly. They need. But, it, but I, realistically, though, like I'm not trying. I I don't want to get like all this talk is fun. I don't want to get my hopes too much up for something that's like, gonna disappoint. Because mm -hmm. realistically, I'm honestly gonna just see maybe like you're gonna have like five or six missions. Collect mm -hmm. this. Collect that. Blah blah blah. Exactly. Take down the fallen leader. End the revolution. Mm -hmm. Close book, and then you get a new gun. A new gun or some new armor. Which, yeah. Unfortunately, that's like the impression that I have for mm -hmm. this DLC is that's how it's going to go down. As much as I want and like would love Bungie to do this, I just I don't know. It's kind of like it's sucky that that I'm expecting such poor DLC. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that really is one of the biggest disappointments, especially with the game overall, is that it doesn't do that for us. It doesn't give us that hype that Bungie is so well known for. Yeah. Bungie is phenomenal with their storytelling. If you look through the Halo series, there's videos on YouTube that will show you all the cutscenes, and they just make this movie mm -hmm. that is unbelievable for you. Whereas you get Destiny, it's like. Yeah, there's you not... You don't have anything to it. No oomph, nothing. Yeah, which is... It, honestly, I felt like it was a real letdown. It was still... The gameplay mechanics were still good. The guns were mm -hmm. still fun to shoot. The enemies are fun to kill. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like... You can't just base a game on gameplay alone, unfortunately. No. At, le at least of this caliber mm -hmm. from like, expecting from Bungie, you know what I mean? Exactly. When you have such a powerful studio that is capable of so much and they've been building this much hype for the game, you cannot yeah. just say, hey... Look at our game mechanics. Yeah, they're phenomenal. I love them. They're one of my favorites. But it's like after shooting the heads off of like all my enemies 500 times in a row by jumping off my, yeah. you know, little glider or whatever you want to call the thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. You know, this gets old. When am I going to like... Yeah, Do Call something. of Duty can pull off doing it every year. They can go back to World War II, or I think exactly. it doesn't almost doesn't even matter there, if there's a story or not in that game. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. People just play it for the multiplayer, and that's unfortunately kind of how I feel that they aim Destiny. Like a lot of your points come from playing multiplayer, like yeah, yeah the matchmaking, like, matchmaking, yeah, and like competitive multiplayer mm -hmm. and like one v one or team battles, battles stuff like that. Which I don't know. I guess that's just this generation and how they like their games, but. Yeah. I don't know. And it's interesting because almost every Destiny player I've spoken to, they say, I want more story. I want, you know, more to happen. Because yeah. they but have a they, good idea. They have a really good idea. The Traveler, the, Traveler's the Guardians, great. it's a good idea. The problem, they just didn't execute it, right? They, the problem is they left too many questions, you know? Mm -hmm. and They left too much to the DLC, which so it, far hasn't answered enough questions. It hasn't. Well, the thing with the DLC itself, too, is it hasn't answered anything about the Traveler. I mean, the last DLC, you got a new enemy, and it was just like, Hey, help me out, I'm blind, I can't find this guy. <sighs> Fight him for me. It's like, okie dokie. Yeah, know? maybe in the last DLC we'll learn about, mm -hmm. like, the Traveler being the ping pong god or something. Yeah, hail the ping pong god, for <sighs> sure, but, I mean... So, so enough now. negative talk about Destiny. What mm -hmm. are some actually things... 
positive about this DLC? Positive about this, this DLC. The positive things that I can see is yes, it gives the rift a lot more value to it because you can click on it on your map, but you just got the space junk floating in the background. And yeah, the and only point of it is to watch one cutscene or two cutscenes, excuse me. Two cutscenes, yes. And, and then, then other than that, it's just there, and, placeholder. Yep, it's just done. And to be honest, that's probably where most of the story came in with the Destiny game mm-hmm. itself. And that's where we get most of Destiny's life from, is because we hit this low point, and then we kind of hit that spark that bounces us back up. Yeah. And so they did a great job with it, and the DLC, if they can follow up with that mm-hmm. continuously, it'll be phenomenal. Yeah. If they do it right, yeah, play the cards right, it can be executed very well. And yeah, overall, it's just going to be fun to see uh, how this uh, DLC is going to play out, and then, of course, maybe we'll start hearing about word for the next pack, maybe come E3, or if not sooner. So uh, if you like this video, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Your links in the description below. As always, give the video a like and a comment. We'd love to hear your input. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye.